my name is David Buckland and welcome to this week's Video Insight. It strikes me that some people in countries are far more entrepreneurial than others. For example, when we think of the countries that make up Scandinavia, they have an aggregate population of 26 million people, a little more than Australia, and yet they have been able to in innovate and establish global brands over recent decades. These black brands exclude, include IKEA and Volvo, Saab, Scania, Electrolux, Kony, Nokia, Ericsson, H&M and Spotify. Sure, a couple of these businesses have fallen by the wayside, but the wealth they've created for Denmark or Finland or Norway or Sweden in their heyday has been truly remarkable. Going on to analyse the top five businesses in Australia and the top five businesses globally, three observations can be made. The first observation is just how old Australia's largest businesses are. BHP was established in 1885, CBA had its origins in 1911, Westpac in 1817, ANZ in 1835 and the NAB in 1893. Of our top 10 companies, Macquarie Group is the youngest at nearly 50 years of age. In comparison, the world's largest five businesses, on average, are less than 30 years old. Apple was established in 1976, Google in 98, Amazon in 1994, Microsoft in 1975 and Facebook in 2004. Interestingly, there are only three non-American businesses in the global top 10. These are all China-based businesses, being Tencent, Alibaba, and Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, which were all founded between 1884 and 1999. The second observation is the top global companies are virtually all technology businesses. They have strong bargaining power, scalability, low cost of growth, unique platform positioning and lots of app optionality. With the exception of Atlassian, which was founded in Sydney in 2002 and enlisted on NASDAQ, Australia is very poorly represented in both technology and global brands. The third observation is one of size. The top two companies globally, Apple and Google, have a combined market capitalization of US $1.65 trillion. And this is 10% greater than the top 500 companies combined listed on the Australian Securities Exchange. So I leave you with this thought. Do you have enough global equities exposure in your portfolio? Do you have enough technology exposure? And do you have enough global brands? That's all I've got time for this week. Thank you, and please continue to follow us on Facebook and Twitter.